Hello and uh, welcome to another playbook uh, and another edition of the weekend reading segment. Uh, today, we are going to talk about Morgan Housel's phenomenal book, The Psychology of Money. Uh, it's, it's a book that I read uh, only fairly recently, uh, perhaps towards the end of last year, end of 2020, and uh, I read it over the, the Christmas and New Year break. Uh, one of the most impactful books uh, I, I've read uh, recently, and it's a book that I think I've probably purchased about 10 odd copies of this book and gifted it to all the all the folks that I know who have teenage children. So it's a book that I highly recommend for anyone who's young. So if you have teenage children, please get them a copy of this book. If you are a youngster yourself, a millennial, you're still in your 20s and 30s, uh, please get yourself this book. If, if, if you're older, uh, you know, this is a book that still will have great impact on you. Now, I've had a very strange relationship with money my entire life. My, my dad's a banker, uh, you know, and, uh, and understands money and understands the flow of money better than most human beings do. So money was a topic of conversation at home, but at a very academic level, right? So I've always un sort of had conversations around, hey, you know, uh, why are things taxed and where does money come from and where does money go and what's investment and things like that. But somehow I was never genuinely interested in money and didn't really think money played that important a role uh, in people's lives. And, and, and that sort of, uh, you know, th that goes towards my own privilege, perhaps, that I, I did understand the, the key role that money played in other people's life and how it can, it can be such a big differentiator. Now, as I got older and, you know, now I actually work in fintech uh, and, uh, you know, I finally, uh, as I got older and now that I'm a dad, I finally started understanding uh, over many, many years of working, uh, the role that money plays and, you know, the, the, the bit part that it actually plays in our happiness and, and in our overall fulfillment of life and our desires, you know, if you want to travel, if you want to read more books, if you want to have time off. So I think I've sort of changed my relationship with money over time and tried to build uh, uh, not just a better relationship, but a better understanding of what money is. Uh, but I do feel that people around us, right, uh, incredibly sharp, smart people, you know, so I'm surrounded by engineers and designers and product managers and people in, in the tech industry, incredibly smart people. But to be truly honest, there are very, very few people that I know of who actually understand money, who understand why money flows the way it does, where money comes from, where money goes, how to invest, how to, uh, how to make more with money and actually understand the psychology of money. Now, even the people who understand money from its sort of economic academic perspective, don't necessarily understand how decisions, financial decisions are made by human beings, where, you know, their psychology is actually an overpowering uh, factor. And which is why this, this, this book was such an eye opener, uh, which is why I think everyone uh, should read this book. I think it, it, it's one of those make or break books now, in terms of trying to understand why we make the kind of financial decisions that we do. So let's jump in. Uh, Right, so the psychology of money uh, and why should I read it, right? Um, the human factor is left out in a lot of discussions around money and personal finance. So when you talk about personal finance, you know, we talk about, you know, the stock market and how to invest and how to invest in ETFs and how to invest in index funds and, you know, how to compound your money and things like that and, you know, how to make decisions around it. But nobody actually talks about the fact that, hey, you're a human being and your relationship with money is actually... Uh, has been shaped by not just your history and the way you grew up, but also by genetics and by the way, uh, you know, human beings are hardwired and the fact that we are, uh, we are animals at our core and, you know, there are things that we don't fundamentally understand. For example, we know how important uh, a part luck plays in life, but we actually don't understand it really well. We also don't understand that most things are probabilistic in nature and we, uh, you know, actually tend to think of things in very flight of flight, uh, fight of flight sort of uh, scenarios. So personal experiences, where you grew up, how you grew up, whether there was scarcity when you were growing up or uh, inflation was very high when you were growing up, shapes a lot of your thinking around money. The book goes quite deep into sort of explaining that, you know, your circumstances and the way you grew up, uh, you know, lead a lot to your decision making in later years. Uh, one also has to keep reminding oneself that money itself as a concept and all these economic concepts are fairly new in our history as a species. Uh, so a lot of these uh, concepts are 
fundamentally not something deeply embedded in our heads and 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 that's that, that's critical you know there are a lot of other overpowering aspects of human history which take away from pure rational thinking uh and pure logical thinking in 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 money decisions i've spoken about this in uh, uh you know a previous weekend reading segment uh, when i discussed thinking in bets by annie duke but human beings in general have a very poor understanding of the crucial role that luck plays in all our decisions but also the fact that we don't understand probability that well uh so do uh, read thinking in bets also but the fact that luck plays a massive part in financial decisions so when somebody does really really well chances are that luck played a great part but even when there is financial disaster it wasn't that they particularly made bad decisions but it's likely that their luck in sort of side on this uh, was not on their side so this aspect is something very few people understand and uh, you know when we when we sort of remove the aspect of luck from our financial decision making it leads to a lot of disasters uh, the other big factor of course is uh, which morgan talks about in the book is that broad patterns are what we need to be watching out for instead of very specific use cases and sort of very specific cases and that's what helps us make better calls so we need to be better pattern matchers right as opposed to just looking at specific opportunities and digging into them so a lot of really great nuggets overall in the book but i think the fact that human psychology plays such a big part and you we he talks a lot about uh, you know incredibly rich people who still could not get rid of their greed and their envy and you know made disastrous decisions uh, as a uh, as a result of that and that uh, you know a lot of these human emotions drive us towards recklessness even though the outcomes are not actually great and we know that the outcomes are not going to be great uh, so having a much better understanding of how your emotions your past your relationship with money shapes the way you make financial decisions will help you make better financial decisions uh morgan is a is a is a partner at the collaborative fund uh you know he used to be a journalist earlier you, you know used to write for the motley fool and a bunch of other publications it's it's a wonderfully written book uh feels almost like a personal memoir sometimes in parts uh you know the way he narrates it uh, but a wonderful book and something that all of us must read uh so i hope you've been enjoying these segments on weekend reading Uh, and i hope you've been enjoying uh, the the channel playbooks and uh, do subscribe to the channel and uh, hope to see you again here for the next playbook take care